That's affirmative. We're go for low. T-minus 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10. We're go for main engine start. 7, 6, start. 3, 2, 1. An astronaut named Astro has a real tough path to fame. Living in 3033 was such an average name. Astro and his man won't let that get them down. They're gonna break out, gonna break out of this tiny solar sound. And there's no need for fighting, the band's gonna play, and you're invited. I started playing bass when I was like 12, I think. Just started, wanted to play music, and that was the one that kind of came up with for me. Uh, yeah, I've kind of been playing my whole life. I come from a musical family. Uh, I learned how to play guitar for church. My dad taught me how to play. I started playing drums around 25. I just got this house to myself. And I said, yeah, I feel like playing something. So, I chose the drums. I, I've been in a musical family as well. Uh, they all they all sing. I was the only one who ever picked up sort of a piano or a guitar. If ever bothered with that. And I can't explain that. I don't know why. <laughs> Now, it's always been around me. It, music's always been a part of my life constantly, all through school. It's always something I work towards. It's always part of my priority. And now I have an opportunity to care about it more than ever. I think when I first actually actively got like, involved in music, I think I was doing uh, in middle school, I was playing like brass. So I learned how to play like tuba, trumpet, like the baritone, and um, yeah, I guess that's what got me like into like music theory and stuff like that. Yeah. I think we all just started playing in school first, probably, right? It was in middle school. Yeah. Yeah, and I started. I like jumped instruments a lot as a kid, but eventually I was like, oh. Drums are approachable, so I just kind of went towards those. I started playing guitar when I was, I think, 12, because uh, cause I had Guitar Hero. Guitar Hero was cool, so why not, why not try the real thing? We got our first show in the summer of 2015. Yeah. And then we played the others a three-piece for a couple years until Patrick came along. Yeah, I, uh, I was looking for months, months and months on all sorts of websites, messaging people like, who can play music with me? Who can finally give me more? I had this, I had this empty void. And uh, that was one of the first ones I saw on Joplin. <laughs> and so I, I did it. And he emailed me back at some point, And I met him at a coffee shop. And I went to his house. And I was scared the entire time. <laughs> so wasn't it through Craigslist? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a good time. Scary. Yeah. You are only one, one and only tryout. Yeah. It's the way to do it. It was awesome. <laughs> yeah, Tennis Club, it kind of started sporadically. Um, we have some friends that were playing, we're like planning on doing like a release for one of their albums, like they had an AP coming out. And um, they were looking for like a band to fill, to open up. And we just kind of, me and Justin and Sean, which originally played bass and drums, um, they yeah, just got together and like wrote a set and at first it was kind of like an experimental thing. Um, we're just kind of doing it for the show, but then kind of people started hitting us up for like playing more shows and stuff. So. Yeah, so 2014, uh, late in the year, we all just kind of like, we all knew each other. I only kind of knew Jade, but I knew that he played bass and uh, there were the drums over at me and Tyler's house, so we are like, you guys want to come over and jam? And then we like, we played Danny California, didn't we? Within like the first 30 seconds, we were like, Get Red Hot Chili Peppers, let's play it. So I think we just played that song. We're like, hey, that went pretty good. Yeah. You, it was after. You, you guys want to form a band? 
It was after band camp, remember? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that was basically it. And we just started like rehearsing a bunch of covers. Yeah. And we had like our first show at a VFW <laughs> with like Jade's uncle's yeah. band, which was legendary. It was great. <laughs> Joplin music scene used to be really big back in like the 90s and then it started to kind of peter out. When I got into music around like 2006 or so and we started going to shows like it was there was like a huge punk scene there was still like a ton of people going to shows and then it kind of petered out. Now there's like a handful of active bands but um, I think it's kind of coming back like there's more and more bands popping up but I don't know right now it's kind of just a few of us, right? Well, we kind of have to do it ourselves. Make like we have to build it ourselves right now. We don't have a lot of people coming to us around here, especially like we have. We're asking friends to so we can play shows in their house because that's what we have to do. I mean, here now, like when I've been around, um, I feel like Blackthorn. Um, here we are. It's kind of like the main place. I mean, the last kind of like savior for this area at the moment. I know that there's like a. There's some sort of like house venue that I'm not really familiar with that it's kind of weird being in the music scene and not knowing where the house shows are, but mostly like our friend Jordan's place that you went to, um, it would be like those are the two main places. There's a couple other bars, but they only have shows every now and then. When we're in our hometown, Baxter, there's basically just dad bands that do the, the whole, like, we're going to play 90s covers and 80s covers and all that kind of stuff. When we got up into Pittsburgh, we noticed there was a lot of hard rock kind of, yeah, kind of going on, kind of stuff. which I'd say even then we're still a bit of an outlier, too, because we end up more poppy sounding, I think. Yeah. I, I feel like Joplin is really special because it really has um, just people with, I don't know, a lot of diverse tastes. People really are, like, open-minded. Um, I just think that maybe like artistically wise people don't, I don't know, it's weird. come together, I guess. Yeah. Like there's uh, I mean, there's really not a whole lot of places to play, but I mean, I don't know, the, everybody that's involved in the music scene is really trying to like get it together. Like the people that are in the music scene are really passionate about it, bringing music to Joplin and trying to really get it to a point that it was before. a lot of different things. Yeah. It's, we look like we're all in a different It's band. very eclectic. I mean, the influences overlap mostly between me, Dan, and Patrick. Like, Jason can dig some of the stuff that we play, but, like, his music taste is oh, really, heard. like, the most eclectic compared to ours. I mean, like, I like 60s psychedelic and, like, prog and stuff like that. And then Jason's, like, Death Grips and... Yeah, it, it, I mean, mm -hmm. it probably adds to the sound, I'm sure. I hope so. Yeah. <laughs> you know, a lot of like the British Invasion stuff. Um, I'm like, for example, like I was a, I'm inspired by like early Beatles stuff, like pop, like the poppy stuff, you know? Um, our drummer like loves the Beach Boys. And I think, yeah, we all, we all love the Beach Boys, yeah. I feel like that's probably like the one band that we get compared to in a way. The like 11 or so songs that we have right now are, they were written so far apart from each other, like at least a month in between each one, that it was kind of like whatever any of us, especially Tyler, was listening to at the time. I guess if you had to put it under one encompassing category, I guess alternative rock would describe Which is a really broad it, category. Which is very broad, but, but that describes about as best as can be described, I guess. Tyler really likes Weezer. Yeah. That's a good way to put it. And then a lot of those, like, just like that garage stuff, you know, that, like, obscure, those bands that were, like, trying to be, like, the Beatles, but, you know, just in the garage, and, I don't know, I guess people call it, like, proto-punk, you know, just kind of helped start that, like, raw sound. So, as we've gone on, we've I think as most bands do, you calm down just a little bit, and you're like, okay, now we're gonna leave. We've kind of started to understand 
what belongs in every song. Like maybe you don't need a guitar solo in every single song and every, things like that. The three songs we released on You're Invited all had guitar solos. Yeah. And I was like, is this, is this too many guitar solos? The answer is no, but sometimes. But Sometimes. for 10 songs on a record, yes. Yeah, yeah, true. So now I think, I think we have three songs that don't have a guitar solo. Yeah, we're getting there. It's a process. I don't know, like really at, at first we were just kind of like, well, we'll write whatever kind of song comes our way. And now I think we're finally starting to like tie down a, a sound we want to go for and kind of push towards that. I think we've gotten better. Oh yeah, that's what I was saying. <laughs> just that's in general, I, I like to think we have. <laughs> oh no, man. Our songs sure have gotten shorter. Yeah, it's just been a really weird year. But um, yeah, I've had like the most interesting time in my life. I mean, I've got to meet a lot of people. I've seen a lot of places I've never really seen or normally wouldn't have a reason to go see, you know, for any specific reason. So yeah, music is really interesting. Our EP, You're Invited, is available on all major streaming services. Currently untitled new album is coming this year and will feature 10 of our most happening songs. That's about all I've got to say. Cool. We can talk about our, our stance. That's, that's the last thing I need right now. Um, <sighs> Favorite beers? Yeah. Um, <laughs> oh, yeah. Five hams. hams. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're working on a hams jingle. Hams jingle, looking to get nice. sponsored. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. I don't know the lyrics to all our songs. I mean, I'll be honest, not me. <laughs> <laughs>